as I was saying, you know, everybody thinks, oh, well, yeah, you know, turn on that video camera and be funny and amuse me. Uh, it, 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 it don't work like that. It don't work like that. Number one, that all that that wildness, that wild side of me just comes and goes. And I don't decide when. It shows up and says, hey, we're being wild today. And I'm like, all right. Or it doesn't. So, and y'all can call that whatever you want to. I don't care, but it is what it is. But along the same lines is, even though the more I've napped, the more I've gotten to where my hands know what to do, it ain't an exclusive thing. I could show y'all. I'll just take here and pretend like I know what I'm doing and use my little my little shearing tool, which I've showed this before, but that's a, a cutout piece of a diamond saw, like a rock saw. And uh, I bought that from a very talented and artistic gentleman at the Water Creek Nap Inn. Tony. That'd be really cool, you know. That's that's that'd be the A side. I just put that in a case like that and go, oh yeah, that's a cool point. We ever say, well, can I see it? No. No, that's that's it right there. Because then they flip it over and you know there's nothing to it, it's just a flake. I did that one piece with a one time with a piece of basalt. I left I left the net I had a I got a piece of basalt from Arizona that it had a natural surface on one side that was flat. It was like the, the, the exterior oxidized ancient basalt surface that was flat. And so I decided to, to make like a lanceolate point only napped on one side kept turning the edge back up and just kept going back to that same side and made the made the one side normal looking lanceolate point and then the other side you turn it over just perfectly flat and had that natural finish of the basalt on it which you know a lot of people say that's stupid but I thought it was kind of cool um, so now I got basically nothing going on here so I have to go short little could do that with a pressure flaker. Hey, hang on. It doesn't make sense to do it with a pressure flaker because it takes like 70 years, but I'll do the pressure flaker. Where's my pressure flaker? Okay, I said this before on pressure flaking. I'm a strong believer in ishy sticks and I've got a double-ended ishy stick, two different sizes. Um, I'm a strong believer in ishy sticks for any work that can be done well with an ishy stick. But I am not a strong believer in an ishy stick when it's not optimal for what you're trying to do. And I kind of talked about what I meant by that in a, in a video, I don't know, a year or whenever ago. But the point there is I can get different angles and I can get different effects with a hand flaker. I cannot get as much force and it isn't as protective of my wrist, etc. But there are some stuff, like I made a point yesterday that I would never try and do with an issue stick because with an issue stick, I'm limited in how in, in how far back I can get to get my angles for pushing. And I'm also limited in the degree to which I can roll during the, the flaking and, and different things. I'm more or less limited to pushing kind of almost straight in. See, you'd say I overdid that a lot by pushing that all that way, and I'm like, yeah, I don't care. So, 
See, they're breaking, and then it's running underneath another, ha another again as far as where it broke, and that's because of the leather. Now, you get these fingernail hinges. Um, I kind of like them if they're not too big. All right, another thing that you can do after you do that is I took that flake, and so now I'm starting to get this angle up here. Well, I can just take and take a short little flake or two, straightening that out a little bit, and I can come up above it and take a little, a little isolating flake, and then I can go back and take the next one. I sure hope you can see. You know, when I'm out here like this, I can't really tell on my monitor what what you're seeing. I mean, I kind of think I can, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I got a I've got a pretty big hump here. You would like your edge not to fail on that. Got a pretty big hump here, and it's not right at all. So really, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch a hand flicker. Where's my hand flicker? Okay, so here's a hand flaker. I wanna check and make sure it's not loose because that wouldn't be good. And I don't want any big burrs on it. Although the more that you load up on your edge before you go, I mean, the, the, the better you grab it, the less the burrs matter. So if you do, you, you'll see people that don't abrade nearly as often as I do. I mean, don't, don't refile their tip nearly as often as I do. If you're grabbing quickly and going, right, then it's not as risky as you would think. You can do, you can, you can actually do flaking without a braiding. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here higher and I'm gonna try and roll as I do it and, and make, that, make the bottom leg of this flake actually come down more than the other ones. Eh. Slipped. See how this turned back down a little bit? Now you can say, hey, you're messing up your pattern. Like, yeah, I don't care. I mean, you're welcome to worry about your patterns all day, but that don't mean I got to. Now, if you will notice, the reason that <clears throat> these flakes ran as far as they did and didn't spread out wider than they did is because they were run along the ridges from the previous flakes. So I've got a ridge right here. I've got a ridge right there. The rest of the thing is just flat. So if we want to get the max length and the least width possible on that particular flake, I'm going to come next to it over here and I'm gonna try and push an isolating flake that direction a little bit. The reason I push it that direction is because when it fans, I don't want the bottom leg to fan into my platform. Okay, look. I pushed it that way and it flared a little bit over here, but on this side, it didn't come in and pinch this too bad. And I didn't get it too close to the other one so therefore, it didn't weaken it a lot, which means I can push my flake better. Because if that edge had failed, if that had let go sooner, then I wouldn't have gotten that much run because I got a lot of force into that thing. <clears throat> and bear in mind, that flake ran that far because it's still under there too. I can pull that off, there you go. That flake ran that far on what was a flat surface, except I took that flake and I took, I took that flake and that flake and that isolating control that flake. Otherwise, it would have been a big old wide fan. All right. I don't even have to finish the point. This is, I'm telling you what I wanted to, I want you to know. Okay, so here's the problem here. All right, so here's my next platform that I'd be using, and you will notice it is too low. So what I'm gonna do without using, 
I'm getting, I'm getting crazy here, but without using an abrader at all, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna flick down a little bit on both sides of that thing and raise it up. And I'm gonna take a little bit longer flake there and a little bit more isolating flake there. Okay, so now, where the heck are you? Now it's a little higher and I'm gonna grab on top of it, which risked making a lip flake, I don't care. Now, that did let go easily, and therefore I got, you know, there. that's the run, but nothing great. But hey, come back over here, come back over here, come back there. Now what this is doing is I'm thinning the edge and I'm making the edge more regular, but the flaking pattern more irregular, but I don't care. Because this is not the finished edge. So the flaking pattern, other than the irregularities for any subsequent flakes, the flaking pattern doesn't matter to me. So I just ran some more down there quickly with no braiding and you can see they weren't nearly as robust as these up here the edge wasn't as stout the edge wasn't as thick the edge wasn't abraded and i wasn't making sure to go along the ridges of each of them but i'm just thinning this out because i'm going to turn it and keep going back that way because i still got a bunch of thickness in the middle it's uh probably seven to eight millimeters in the, in the middle and that's the problem that you know, sometimes folks can forget about. If it's thick in the middle, then at some point you've got to get enough edge, enough thickness to an edge, and enough setup on an edge, and convexity and ridges, whatever you need, you have to get to that center line at some point and get, get that thickness off. And it's much easier to do it with uh, indirect than with direct. Or with pressure. In fact, at, at this stage, for most people, it isn't possible with pressure. So you just don't have the stuff you need. You don't have the convexity, you don't have the ridges. By the way, and I've said this before too. I was hitting downward quite a bit. Can you see on this edge all this little buggering up? If you want to try and avoid that, which I did avoid it better on the other side, but if you want to try and avoid it, get you some kind of hammer stone that's fairly tough. And try turning your edges with that hammer stone. Because they're skatier, it's not as grabby as copper and has a tendency to give you a lot cleaner edge. If this isn't focusing, I'm going to be very upset. That's not focused. Piece of junk. Why is it suddenly not focusing? Be back. <laughs> 